Enterprise Communications. Well, we're one of the largest uh, traditional, if you will, telephony vendors in the world. Um, and we operate in these uh, six solution areas. IT telephony, uh, notice that it doesn't say IP telephony, I'll cover that in a second. Unified communications, mobility, customer interaction, uh, security solutions in these areas, and a whole bunch of uh, services uh, to support these areas. Now we believe that we are a unified communications software and services company as we move into the future. And we believe that the uh, telephony-oriented vendors uh, will have to become software and services companies as we move into the future. And we believe that the, S, the data SIs, the application SIs, will move very aggressively into the voice space. And I'll develop that idea a little bit further. We're about a $4.8 billion uh, company. Um, that number was lower about six months ago because that's the euro to dollar conversion. But you can see we're a major uh, provider in every market. We're uh, one or two in Europe, uh, depending on the day of the week. We're number one in Latin America. Uh, we're in the top five or six in, uh, in uh, APAC, number one in large enterprises in China and India. Uh, and then we do a great business uh, in North America, so we uh, are primarily focused on large enterprises and are in a top four uh, market position uh, there. About half our revenue is services, just to put it in perspective as well. Now, there's been a few rumors about what's happening about uh, the future uh, of our industry. <laughs> Jim, Jim talked about uh, the consolidation of the industry. And almost two years ago, Siemens announced that they believed that there would be a consolidation in the industry for all the reasons that Jim articulated. And we believe that. And so I believe we'll have an announcement uh, probably uh, if all goes according to plan. This is the fourth or fifth time I've said this in public <laughs> in uh, 60 days. Uh, but it's our belief that fundamentally, uh, if, you, if we want to succeed in the future, we won't succeed in being one of the, those major players uh, unless we do some things fundamentally different. Um, I'll develop this idea a little bit further, but I believe that the vendors who will be the big players are, are like Jim said, I think it will be Microsoft, I think they'll be uh, IBM, I think they'll be Siemens. Uh, many of you would wonder why I left out uh, one company, uh, but I think they uh, really haven't figured out yet that it's a software and services world. But of course, if they figure that out, uh, they can be a player as well. I think what's impressive is that we've been able to maintain our market share, uh, both in lines as well as in uh, revenue. A little bit hard to see, but uh, we're number two in revenue and number uh, three in IP line ship. So that's a, a little bit about our background and about uh, how we see the future. Now Jim uh, defined a unified communications, provided a definition, so I won't spend too much time on this uh, this evening, but sometimes when you talk to people there's a lot of different ideas. I think the key point that I would want to make here is that you need to bring a lot of different technologies together. But at the end of the day, we believe voice is the most fundamental form of human communications it's the most intuitive, it's the most interactive, and I, th I think it's the most effective. And we believe that any uh, unified communication solutions will really have to be built around a voice foundation. Uh, Jim talked about uh, across any media, across any devices, and he also talked about what I call a new way to communicate. Presence information, federation, virtualization, embedding communications into business processes. Uh, how many have teenagers? Okay, kids in college in the first couple of years. Right. So if you have those kids, it's the way they communicate. If you ever, I, I always think of uh, uh, my son playing Xbox. He's, you know, people, literally people from all over the world. It's a full collaboration session, chat, voice over IP, the whole nine yards. And just imagine what happens when they come into a business world. And that's really what Unified Communications is about, is trying to deliver that type of experience in a business world. Now, in 2005, the Gartner Group wrote an article called, uh, let me just uh, try and read it, uh, I guess I have to look up here, IPPBX is a potential architectural dead end. And this is exactly the point that Jim was making. It will go from a vertically integrated voice over IP, I'm not talking about PBX, I'm talking about voice over IP, a vertically integrated application to a horizontal application. And I think the best way you can think of it is to think of voice like an Oracle database. It's going to be a highly specialized application that supports a lot of other applications. So they said that the IP PPX is at a dead end, and we believe it seems that is true. Put in perspective, we ship about 
5 million uh, voice over IP licenses a year. <coughs> then, about a year later, Cisco at VoiceCon announced that they were renaming their entire product line UC. I think they put UC in front of everything. I thought it was a very clever way to lower your r and expenses. <laughs> uh, but they did it. They were trying to make a statement to the market. Now, maybe the more significant announcement, and Jim talked about this, was when Microsoft said that they were going to enter the voice market. And they said that they were going to drive the cost of voice down by 50%. And that's where I said, no, I thought they were wrong. They drive it down even more. That was an interesting conversation, by the way, that I had with their CFO after that meeting. But in any case, uh, the point is, is that, that, that I really believe that. But that doesn't mean that the whole value stream for all of you or us goes down. Because the voice is 25%. But then there's another 25% or so that's spent on uh, devices, video devices, endpoint devices, software devices. Another 25% is spent on um, unified communications types of software. And another 25% roughly is spent on services. So I believe the price per user probably remains about the same. Uh, maybe it goes down a little bit, but certainly the voice component uh, will go down. And this is why Siemens believes that there must be consolidation in the industry. There are not going to be eight gazillion telephony vendors in the future. There will be two or three. Think about how a software uh, model or a services model is structured. You typically, in the software, you'll have one or two dominant players and then everybody else. And this is what the voice world will look like in the future. Then IBM announced, uh, right after Microsoft, at VoiceCon Fall, that they were enter entering a unified communications marketplace. And they announced uh, that they would be uh, delivering unified communications. And they, in fact, are OEMing Siemens OpenScape unified communications and embedding it into Lotus at the same time. Why? Because it was the only software-based solo based product on the market. It's not a, uh, a lot of the voice vendors think that unified communications is voicemail. Great, we're going to sell you a voicemail system and call it UC. Not that it doesn't have different fun capabilities, but the, but the point is, it, is it has to be a web services open software application to deliver on that value proposition. Now, where are Siemens? Well, as Jim mentioned, we got a head start. Uh, we introduced OpenScape uh, unified communication software to the market in November of 2003. And I remember, I, had, I remember going out and talking to all the major press players, all the analysts, and in most cases have to explain to them what presence was, federation, uh, things that in the software world you would take uh, for granted. So we made that announcement. About six months later, we announced a software-based uh, unified communications media engine. We called it a soft switch. We called it a, a voice over IP system because we didn't think anybody could understand it. But the truth was, it was a connection software for any type of media. Now, over the last six months uh, at CBIT, we made two major announcements. One uh, was a uh, unified communications appliance, which you can see here today for the SMB. And the second was OpenScape UC server. And I'll develop that a little bit further. Uh, because we believe that you fundamentally have to move from these vertical voice over IP and proprietary voice over IP systems and, and really don't believe what the marketing guys say. The voice over IP system, I know, I know I'm a marketing guy. I don't even believe myself, by the way. My kids certainly don't believe me. But in any case, uh, the point is, is that the voice over IP systems, the converse systems from Alcatel, Siemens, Avaya, Nortel, Cisco, they're proprietary systems that run on uh, IP networks. And so the next phase that we need to get to is open software systems that operate in the IT world. Now, uh, Jim talked about this a little bit. So we believe that it moves from a hardware world and a network world to a software and services world. So this is a traditional TDM network, site-based, proprietary, computerized, kind of a, a mainframe. Uh, this is the world that we live in today, voice over IP. So it improved it. You have better networking, lower cost networking. Um, it's probably more open hardware and software, but still I think it's fair to say that it's proprietary and it operates on an open network. But the next generation, and the current generation really, of communications for voice will be software that runs out of a data center. So one software application running out of a data center for a company like IBM will replace two or three hundred PBXs. And this has very fundamental implications for the businesses that we're all at. It will also operate on industry standard hardware. It 
will use open software and will operate. That doesn't mean there won't be software like in an Oracle environment or a Microsoft environment uh, that is proprietary to the vendor, but it'll, it'll operate in an open ecosystem and allow you to integrate it deeply into uh, business processes. 